It's time for bed, Petey! Alright, Grandma and Pa, you will tell me a story, right? Of course, Petey, but what do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear about how your father, Telly, sailed off to search for your Grandpa Odie when he was just a young man? Nah, I want to hear about Grandpa Odie and his great adventure. Oh, Petey. I wish you could have known your Grandpa Odie longer. You had the spitting image of him when he was young. Just like your father. You three could have been clones. But what was he like? Did he dream about an adventure like me and like Papa named when he was younger? Ah, <laughs> oh, Petey. He didn't have to dream about it. He lived it. Your Grandpa Odie was a master adventurer and a great storyteller. I wish he was here right now to tell you of all his great adventures, but I'll do my best. I heard his tales of adventure often enough. I should be able to tell them pretty well. Tell me, Grandma Penny. Tell me about some of Grandpa's all the great adventures. All right. <clears throat> well, most of your Grandpa Odie's greatest adventures began on his way home from the war. Grandpa was in the war? He sure was. Was he a brave soldier? One of the bravest. <clears throat> and goodness, he was cunning. Grandma, what does cunning mean? Well, it means that he used his brains to outsmart his enemies rather than just using his sword like most of the men with him did. He was great at that. In fact, your Grandpa Odie played an important part in the war. How? Well, your father was fighting for a good friend of his, whose brother's wife, who also happens to be my cousin, had been tricked and then kidnapped by a man who she thought she loved. She was being held in the city of Troy, which is quite a long way from here. Your Grandpa Odie and his men tried for almost ten years to get into that city where she was being held. It was very difficult because there was a high wall all the way around the city and there were gates that were always carefully guarded. Everybody was pretty tired of the war by then and just wanted to go home. That's when your grandpa got an idea. Hey Aggie, I've got an idea. Yeah? What is it? Well, just look at all the ships out there. Half of them are so battered they'll never sail again. And as for the rest, well, they're not going anywhere until we win this war and rescue your brother's wife, Helen. True enough. So what do you propose? Well, I was thinking, what if we got all the men together and took our ships apart over the course of a few nights? We could build a huge wooden horse over the hulls of our ships, wheel it right to the gates of Troy, we could all hide inside of it, and get one person to present it as an offering. They won't know what to think, but who could refuse such a unique gift? They'll haul us right inside right inside those giant walls, and we can fight on the ground, rescue Helen, and we can all go home. What do you think? Odie, it's the craziest idea I've ever heard, but it's so crazy, it just might work. Go, get your men together, I'll get mine, and we'll start work as soon as it gets dark. I don't want the Trojans suspecting anything. Well, they worked four full nights building that giant wooden horse, and on the fifth night, they wheeled it right up to the gates of Troy. The next morning, the men climbed inside, and the messenger went and presented the horse as a gift. The Trojans were a little suspicious at first, but the horse was so unique that they could not resist. They used ropes to haul the horse right through the gates of the city. Well, Odie's plan had worked. He and his men hid in the horse one more day and night, and at dawn on the seventh morning, they came out of the horse and surprised the soldiers of Troy. They fought their way to the castle and rescued Helen. Then they boarded the ships that they had not used to make the horse, took whatever Trojan ships they needed, and started for home, loaded down with treasure. How long did it take Grandpa to get home from the war? Ah, Petey. It will be ten years after the war's end before I saw my beloved husband, your Grandpa Odie, again. But why? 
Now you see, Odie's adventures were really just beginning. Tell me more, Grandma. Well, you see, PB. Troy is a long way from our home here in Ithaca, and the boats weren't that big. Your grandpa and his men often had to make stops along the way to gather food and water and other supplies that they needed to continue the journey. One day, late in the afternoon, they sighted land. Now, they were hungry and tired from many days at sea. They'd been traveling quite a while. They decided to land and spend the night camping on the island after collecting some needed supplies. Off in the distance, they could see some meadows where it looked like there were some herds of sheep grazing. There was a series of high cliffs that formed a barrier against the beach. And amid cracks in the base of the cliffs were a series of caves. Odie's men were anxious to find food and treasure, and they ran on ahead of him. What they found was a giant cave full of all kinds of good food and drink and piles and piles of wool blankets. Well, after a bit of searching, your grandpa caught up with his men in that remarkable cave. Well, Jackie, what did you find here? Odie, look! Why, there must be enough food here to last us the entire next leg of our journey. We should grab it all, quickly, before someone returns and get off this island. Jackie, I know you're hungry. We all are. But let's hold off for a little while. We'd never get all this stuff back to the ship in time. It's almost nightfall. The occupant of this cave is bound to come home soon. I'd rather he not come home and find us raiding his pantry. Besides, the laws of hospitality, he'll have to offer us something to eat and give us a place to stay for the night. If we can meet him on good terms, perhaps he will let us have some of these fine blankets. Besides, the weather is cold, and we'll need them soon. Well, you've got a point. Your grandpa was always thinking ahead, but things never seemed to work out just the way he planned. Now, Grandpa and his men were all pretty tired from their long journey at sea. They had gone ahead and had a bite to eat, just enough to tide them over. Well, between the warmth of the cave and the comfort of the blankets on which they were reclining as they waited for the owner's return, they had soon fallen fast asleep. They were awakened by a, suddenly by an alarming noise. Who dares enters Polly's cave? Now the rest of Grandpa's men stood up quick as could be and tried to hide in the back of the cave. But your Grandpa had seen monsters and giants before and he wasn't afraid. He alone approached Cyclops. He had recognized from a book he had read right away who this Cyclopean being was. Polly Woggle was none other than the son of Poseidon great god of the sea. Odie thought that if he could only make a good impression on Pollywoggle, that Pollywoggle might convince his father to bless them with good wind and waves on their way home. But it turned out that Pollywoggle was as much a force to be reckoned with as his father Poseidon. Please, sir, greetings. We are humble sailors far from home in Ithaca. We have just come from ten years fighting in the War of Troy to fix an injustice. We've had nothing good to eat for days, and have come to beg for some food and drink from you. And perhaps, if you are willing, some warm blankets with which to send us on our way. It will be very cold soon, and our provisions are in poor shape. Men eat of animals. Cyclops not eat meat of animals. Cyclops eat men! We would be happy to content ourselves with the cheese and the milk where we have seen. Surely you know that by the laws of hospitality, you are required to grant us at least that much. Cyclops know no such laws. Only one law is Cyclops Island. Cyclops take what Cyclops want. Cyclops hungry. Cyclops want man for dinner! Well, before Odie could even react, the Cyclops had made quick work of his supper. 
He devoured six of Odysseus' men before anything could be done. Odin knew he had to do something. Pollywoggle, my men couldn't have been that tasty. Why not let the rest of my men go? You can have me instead. I am far more muscular. Why, even one of my legs alone must have had more meat than some of my men. I offer myself to you in a new law of hospitality, but for the love of the gods, let my men go. Cyclops full now. Cyclops save you for dessert. Well, in that case, how about some good wine to wash down my men? I mean, your supper with. Cyclops not know. What mean wine? Well, if you've never tried wine, then you're in luck. Wine is the nectar of the gods. We men from Mythica carry nothing but the best wine. And I just happen to have a jug right here. Well, Polly Woggle accepted the wine. Turned out he liked wine. And being the big fellow that he was, he drank the whole jug. Now, this wasn't no ordinary wine. You see, Odie had a sleeping potion that Helen had given him out of appreciation for his part in her rescue and the war in Troy. <laughs> Odie carried this in a pouch in his cloak, and whenever he went ashore, for he never knew when he was going to need it. Well, Polly Woggle was such a huge creature that Odie had dumped half the pouch into the jug of wine while his back was turned. Polly Woggle was soon dead to the world in a very deep sleep. Which gave Odie and his men time and the opportunity, first to eat their fill of supper, and second to come up with a plan for escape. What did they decide to do? Well, Grandpa had all the men take off their shirts, and then he took his off, and they all tied them together and made a giant blindfold. Bah! 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 Hey, Polly, wake up. I think your sheep want to go outside. Cyclops hungry! Cyclops eat man for breakfast! Alright, but you're gonna have to catch me first. Well, you see, Odie had worked out with his men ahead of time how their plan was going to proceed. He would distract Pollywoggle, and meanwhile, his men would creep up behind him and blindfold him. Oh, I can't see! Why have you blindfolded me? Oh, I cannot see! But then, how did he escape, Grandma? Well, whatever Polly Woggle's eccentricities, he was still just a simple shepherd and determined to care for his flock no matter what the cost. The sheep started baying, and they were upset by the commotion and wanted to be let out. Hollywoggle feared for their safety, since these men had already mentioned how hungry they were, and that he knew that they ate animal meat. Still blindfolded, he made his way to the large boulder and unrolled it from the mouth of the cave. Never one to miss an opportunity, Odie motioned his men to grab onto the bellies of the sheep and hold on with their boots. As Pollywoggle counted each one off, one by one, so one by one, Odie's men caught rides out of the cave. Wow, Grandma, what a great story. What, but they didn't get away with any food for their journey, did they? Or blankets even? No, and worse than that, your Grandpa Odie's men were bragging on their way back to the ship. They were proud of Odie. His pride was contagious. And your grandpa Odie made the mistake of yelling at the top of his lungs, Nobody defeats the great Odie, not even Pollywoggle the Cyclops, son of Poseidon. Well, what Odie didn't realize was that Pollywoggle's hearing matched his size. He heard Odie yelling his name out loud from the boat. When he had heard this, he was so humiliated at having been tricked that he called upon his father, Poseidon, Lord of the Sea. Father, avenge me! Never let these sailors return home from Troy! Well, that was pretty much the start of Odie's troubles. You see, Poseidon heard Pollywoggle's plea. 
From that moment on, they had storms and trials without end, and lost many good men. If they had not gotten Pollywoggle mad at them, they might have gotten home sooner. But now Poseidon, lord of the sea, was against them every step of the way. Wow, Grandma, that was a great story, but what happens next? Well, what happens next is a story for another night. Ah, uh, Grandma, please, just one more, then I promise I'll go to sleep. I'm not sure you can stay awake for one more. I can, I can, I promise, and then I'll go to sleep. Just one more, please. All right, Petey. One more, and then it's lights out. Okay. Well, now, where to start? Your Grandpa Odie had many adventures and experienced many dangers in many lands along his way home. But perhaps the strangest thing that ever took place was on the island of Aea, island of the beautiful goddess Circe. Oh, what does a goddess look like? Well, they're all different. But Circe was a gorgeous immortal who had curly blonde hair. She was fair indeed and had bright blue eyes, very unusual for these parts. Well now, Odie and his men had been traveling quite a long time and they had been through many storms. They were tired and hungry and their boat was in bad need of repairs. They saw another island in the distance, although this one seemed to be more inhabited than the island where they met Pollywoggle. They landed on the shore of the island. Well, as I mentioned, the boat was in pretty bad need of repairs. So this time, when they went ashore, Odie split the men into two groups. He stayed with one group of men on the beach, overseeing repairs to the ship. The other group he sent up into the hills where he had seen smoke rising from a chimney to see about some carrying some provisions. The men hiked for quite a while, and then they came to a large house with all kinds of animals around it. It should have been very wild, but they seemed remarkably tame. They looked around and they noticed in front of the house was seated a beautiful goddess. Well, hello, boys. You must be on your way back from the war. Come, have something to eat and be my most honored guest. Well, Odie's men had a tendency to lead with their stomachs instead of their minds. They followed right where a great feast was. Petey? Petey? Well, she fed them and turned them into animals. Their grandpa saved the day and eventually made it home eight years later. And we all lived happily ever after. The end.